tonight's program is Aging with Dignity, Access to Resources. And so pretty soon you will hear Randy Christian, who is the co-director of Elder Care Planning Council here in Athens. Mr. Christian works in the financial services industry and specializes in helping boomers, seniors, and elders in our community, especially war veterans and their spouses, coordinate financial issues such as retirement income planning, social security benefits, financial protection, lifetime income, and long-term health care. At the Elder Care Planning Council, people put together services with families who need some assistance as they plan aging. <laughs> Please welcome Randy Christian. Thanks so very much for everybody showing up here tonight. Uh, we had to compete with the rodeo over on uh, East Millage. And so, uh, as my co-director Ronnie Ogletree said, uh, some people wanted to ride the bull and some people were willing to get some BS. So uh, I guess that's our group is the, is the latter here. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks for the library for having us here. Um, Aging with Dignity, the, the resources, uh, this, is, this is really a, a very, very serious subject for everybody in the room here and the, the ever-increasing dynamic uh, demographic of aging. I don't know if everybody is familiar with it, but there's supposedly 10,000 people turning 65 every day. Uh, as a long-range financial planner, what that says to me is, if that's what's happening today, then there's going to be 9,900 turning 75 in 10 years, and there's going to be nine, maybe 8,500 turning 85 in 20 years, and maybe 7,500 in 30 years, and it's just it's just a it, this giant bubble, and so rather than waiting until you're in crisis, the purpose of our group here and what the Elder Care Planning Council is de is dedicated to is to a number of different things of which I'll see if I can do this. Yeah, there's, there's us. Um, Elder Care Planning Council of Northeast Georgia, uh, we are acronym crazy, aren't we? Everybody lives and dies by acronyms. Well, on the way to a presentation that we were doing last year at one of the local churches, I said ECPC, and that's what everybody in the, in the council calls it, ECPC. Well, it sounds like easy peasy, and so, but I said ECPC, well, that doesn't tell people really what we're about. So our first thing is about education, and that's what we're here for tonight to do, to try and give you a 30,000-foot view education of the types of things and the areas that if you wait until you're in crisis, until husband has Alzheimer's, until wife falls and breaks her hip, until mom or dad, I bet people here, who still has parents alive? Yeah, see four or five, four or five six folks still, still have their parents around. If you wait until you're in crisis, then you've missed the boat to prepare for it and you don't know what to do. I've known, I know, I have seen, meet so many folks that are just, totally overwhelmed with where to turn, what to do. That makes them subject to all sorts of vulnerable, to all sorts of issues. So the purpose tonight is to try and give you a 30,000 foot view of education. Second, you need to consider options. Once you've been educated on all of these various issues that you may or may not be confronted with, then you need to consider the various options that might be uh, pertinent to your specific situation. Third, this is my, my mantra, you got to start making some plans. Uh, another thing within the financial services industry that uh, we have heard many times is that people spend more time planning their summer vacation than they do planning their entire retirement. And it's not just getting to age 65 or 70 to when you can quit working. Most financial advisors kind of drop you off at the shore and say, have a nice, have a nice life. But it's that your, your real financial and care management liability is what happens from 65 or 70 until maybe 80, 85, 90, 95. I've, got, I've had clients in their, in their late 90s. Oh, my gosh. Who would have known? Who could have known? So then second or third, we want you to, to start formulating some plan and then most importantly, carry out. That had to, I, it should be implement, but 
were ECPC, not ECPI. So I had to carry out carry out your plans. And that it, within the financial services industry is one of the biggest problems. People pay a lot of money for a very sophisticated, very well put together financial plan. And it's in a nice leather bound book and they pay uh, thousands of dollars for it. They take it home and they set it on the desk and say, Martha, darling, we, we got our plan. And then a couple of weeks later they say, yep, we got our plan. And then a couple of months later, they dust off the dust and say, I'm glad we got this plan. They stick it in the drawer. And five years later, they never did anything. And so implementing is, so, is such a very, very important part. What we have found <clears throat> in our study of the aging process is there's about 21 issues that folks have consistently and repeatedly nationwide come up with. And that's a, it's a good big screen. I, I wish I could have printed this into, but you can get this off of our website. And what we're trying to do is give you a smattering of all of these 21 issues, kind of again from the big picture. This is a uh, summary of some of the companies. Uh, another thing I, I need to be upfront and clear about, we are not a government funded agency. We are funded purely by the businesses that you see represented here. Um, so let's get into it. We're about Elder Care Planning Council is the support services for aging seniors. Um, the first thing we wanted to just mention is the assistance with aid and attendance veterans administration benefit. Anybody here, uh, the spouse or veteran of World War II, Korea or Vietnam? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six people out of 30, that's, uh, that's what, about uh, 20%. 20% of the folks here might have eligibility for this and probably never even knew about it. There's over 10 million veterans and, and their spouses. And what it does is it, you have to, there's, it's a three-pronged benefit provided by our federal government and the Veterans Administration. And first you have to have specific dates of service for either World War II, Korea, or Vietnam honorable discharge in 90 days of service. And you didn't have to be on the front line shooting. You could have been at Warner Robins uh, fixing airplanes. So, but if you were there during those dates with a uh, honorable discharge and you have need for care, which is anybody here have long-term care insurance, heard of the uh, activities of daily living, that's a pretty standard qualification. So if you have need for care as defined as being unable to perform two of the five activities of daily living, and you, there is a means test of assets and income, which is an ever-shrinking uh, qualification, then you fill out a 35-page application, and if you do it exactly right, dot every I, dot every T, don't miss a form, and for, don't forget to date or sign something within three to six months, you can get, you can start receiving some, some income to help you to pay for that care. Unfortunately, too many people try to do this on their own and it's an incredibly difficult process and it's very, very specific just like dealing with, with anything within the, uh, the federal government. So that's one thing, one area that a lot of folks are not aware of and we always like to point that out. Next, we wanna talk for a minute about geriatric care management specialist. If mom or dad or husband or wife is in need of some care, some care management, you might want to start with a care, a geriatric care management specialist who can come in and do at a fairly nominal and reasonable rate uh, a, an assessment of the medical and um, uh, phys physical, kind of the, the home situation to help give you some, some insight as to, well, we want, you know, mom wants to stay at home. Well, I understand that, but if mom's really better off in some sort of a facility, you need kind of a professional to be able to, to share that with you and to tell you how to do that. Um, all too often, people are, the other, the other hidden cost is that the caregiver is so busy giving care to the, the care the person who needs care, that the caregiver gets burned out, they lose their job, they, they get burned out, they have, they have a collapse, and now you've got not just one person that needs care, now you've got two. 
And so without some professional guidance on how to arrange the care, which is what a, ger a geriatric care management specialist can do, then you at least have some guidance. So if you want to try and do it all on your own, at least, you know, you knew what the, pen what the potential penalties were. Um, they conduct ongoing assessments. Uh, a man there's, there's an assessment, and then there's case managers, and the, the uh, Athens Community Council on Aging has a department within there that, uh, that they use, and you can actually have somebody. This is especially uh, important for the situation, and this is very, very prominent. Mom and dad live in Athens, but sister, brother, children are in Los Angeles, uh, Cedar Rapids and uh, Milwaukee, and they're really fine where they are, but mom and dad need care in Athens, Georgia. So either you move them to there or you move them to here, and it's just an incredibly difficult conundrum of how do you provide the care? Mon money aside, you got the money, but how do you find the right people? How do you find the, the quality providers? Well, you've got to have somebody to help you, and that's where a geriatric care management specialist can do and can even come in on a regular basis to make sure, you know, mom and dad are taking their medicines, that they're going to the doctor when they're supposed to, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you kind of have a, a professional that can manage um, the, the care. Home care service providers. Big industry right now. Anybody know what a home care provider really does? It just shows up. It just shows up. Shows up. <laughs> yes. And what is the cost of showing up? How about 20 bucks an hour? Not bad, except for the fact that it's a minimum of four hours a day. Wow, wait a minute. That's $80 for one day for four hours. Five days, 80 times five. Oh, my gosh, that's $400 a week times four, oh my gosh, that's $1,600 a month for somebody to come in part-time. Expensive stuff, but it's good, and it provides a lot of value and a lot of benefits, but is that really what's best for mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, Harry? Something that you need to learn about. The difference between the home health agency and a non-medical home care service is we just described non-medical home care. They're, they've, they're also called companion services, and they will provide service for uh, helping do the dishes, cook the meals, uh, make sure mom has taken the medicine. Uh, they, a lot, I've heard that some are under strict legal prohibition from touching the, the, the client. So they can, they can give them medicine, they can help them to set out their clothes, but they can't, they can't have any physical contact. So uh, home, non-medical home care is more of a companion service. Home health care agency is like a doctor, it's like being in the hospital except only at home. Um, we've got an infusion service uh, that unfortunately she wasn't here, but you've heard of that, uh, that hospital over there on Prince Avenue, what's it called? Uh, Athens, Re oh, Piedmont Athens Regional Home Care. So they, they provide in-home health services and there's a big distinction between the two. Non-medical home care services is private pay. There's no Medicare, there's no Medicaid, uh, there's no government agency that makes any payments other than your checkbook and your money. Home health agency is usually paid through Medicare, and there are certain limits as to how much it pays and how, how much and how, for how long they'll pay. Um, home maintenance, transportation, and chore services. This is another area that folks don't think about. You know, son says, well, I've got to go to mom. Oh, I can't do that. I've got to go to mom's and cut the grass. Well, you can hire people to do that. We've got a home, uh, uh, one of our members, is uh, home modification, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And we've also, one of our council members is non-medical, is medical transport, which again, when the kids live far away and mom or dad can't drive, and they've got a doctor's appointment across town, well, how do they get there? I don't know, you could call Uber, but I don't know, there's some legal stuff going on with Uber, so you could, but you can hire a medical transportation company, come pick you up, take you, sit, wait for you to finish your appointment, and come back. And these, you know, again, part of what I wanted to accomplish with you folks tonight is to just open up your eyes and see this big picture that there's so many services out there that many people just are not even aware of. Um, 
home disability and support and alert systems. And I think the um, EMC, isn't it, Ronnie? Uh, the EMC provides these alert services, and they're all over the place. We we talked to one out of California, the 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 fellow that designed. You been in the, anybody been in the hospital lately? Did they put they, you know they put they take your pulse and blood uh, pulse and blood? Uh, I guess it's just your pulse. Oxygen and oxygen, right? They do that. Well, the guy that invented that thing had a home security system that was a motion detector that not only tracked where the resident was, but how long they were in each place, and it had an alert system that would then send a, a text to a designated cell phone or an iPhone to let you know that mom had been in the bathroom for an hour and a half at three o'clock in the morning. Well, maybe that's not normal, but maybe it is, but at least there's an alert that can then tell you. So there's these medical alert and disability support systems out there um, that can help to provide the care. Elder law and estate planning, um, people say, well, I don't need an estate plan because, you know, I don't, I don't have multi-millions. But an estate, an estate plan is having a current up-to-date will. It's having... Um, uh, advanced directives so that you can tell doctors and family at what point do you cut services off? Um, at what point do you, um, uh, do you allow, do you, do you go into, um, uh, hospice care? Um, powers of attorney, financial powers of attorney is another thing. Now I'm a financial advisor. If I've got an elder client, with an investment account or insurance, and they develop Alzheimer's, and the child comes and says, "Oh, mom needs to, we need to sell this investment, or we need more money out of the account." I gotta say, I'm sorry, I'm sympathetic, I know you and I care about you, but I can't do anything without a power of attorney. So, powers of attorney are very important not only for us, but for those people for whom we are taking care of, and don't. Don't do it the inexpensive way. Don't go online and do it. Get with an attorney, pay a little bit more, but make sure that it's right and it's done, it's done right and it's done by a, a local competent estate planning attorney. Now, elder law is, is another very specific area of law and it deals with Medicaid planning and the veterans benefit planning that I was mentioning at the very beginning of the, of the session that because one of the strategies in order to qualify both for Medicaid and this is a, there's a moral conundrum of Medicaid planning. Medicaid, anybody know what Medicaid is? Know how it works any, at all? Basically, it's for people who are uh, utterly indigent. They, they have only 2,000, you're only allowed $2,000 of assets and all of your income must be being spent on some sort of facility type care. Then Medicaid can pick up the difference between what you have, your $1,400 a month of uh, social security and pension, and the four or $5,000 worth of nursing home expense, and Medicaid will take up the slack. It's very, very complicated, but an elder law, some people will, with millions, will set up a trust to transfer ownership of their assets into a Medicaid trust so that they can qualify for government benefits. Now, there's a moral conundrum there because some people say, well, God, if you've got the money, you should pay. You should pay for yourself because the, the legislation was never intended for wealthy people to get this money. But, hey, we're in America. There's innovative planning. There's uh, very expensive and very smart attorneys that will do what they do. But elder law, though, is for, for those folks who really, truly are in need of Medicaid, there is still some things that you can do that isn't sheltering uh, millions of dollars in order to benefit your children. But, again, estate planning, uh, and I can't tell you how many people I see. And in our comprehensive planning process, I say, well, uh, I'd like to look at a copy of your will. Uh, I, I don't know where it is. Well, when, when, did, when did you get it? Martha, when did we move to Georgia? Yeah, it's been 1972. 
Man, oh, they're so out of date. They need to get that up to speed, and a competent estate and uh, an elder law attorney can help do that at a very, very reasonable cost. But it's so very, very important, whether you got millions or just thousands, it doesn't really matter. Mediation services is something, again, another big issue that, that comes up quite often, and I've got clients that are dealing with this right now. I've got, uh, she, the, the client is 93, her son is 72, and his wife is 68. And we've been doing estate planning and financial planning for 20 or 30 years. But the family is at odds with each other as to what to do, how to do it, and who gets what. And I try and be as objective as I can, but I'm just the financial guy. I'm not a professional mediator. But these are things that if you plan ahead and everybody gets on board, then the situation like this is avoided or at least dim, dented and minimized a little bit so that it's not critical when mom is 93 and on life support and you're trying to get her to do stuff or if there's uh, some dementia or Alzheimer's issues where competency suddenly comes into play and mom's not capable of changing her will or doing any sort of financial uh, transactions. So, but if you plan ahead and update every couple of years, then you can avoid the need for mediation services. If you haven't done that, then a mediation, a mediation service might be something that would have some bearing and some, some import for you. Concierge accounting services is, is a service where bill paying and record keeping is, is provided for you, again, at a fee. No bills are paid, but bill arrangement and, and uh, planning and uh, filing and helping to, to keep track of expenses. One great uh, benefit here is a, financial elder abuse is also a rampant condition, and family members seem to feel entitled to, well, I did this for mom, so, you know, she can... She can she can afford paying off my $20,000 car loan. I mean, I, I've been helping her. That's very rational. That's very reasonable. <laughs> but it's against the law. So having a concierge accounting service can help to make sure that, that these kinds of things don't go on. Um, mail processing helps with uh, uh, financial advisors, uh, documenting things. And some, some of the folks that use this, just don't want to mess with it. Just don't. It's just. It's just home. It's bookkeeping and it's uh, office organization and it's just something that it's another service that a lot of folks are not aware of. Financial services specialist. Obviously, there's insurance issues. Uh, the, uh, Medicare insurance. You need a Medicare professional. That's a. That's not an employee of Medicare themselves because. One of the big issues that comes up, I used to handle Medicare Advantage and Medicare supplements, but it came to the point where several years ago that there was so much government regulation, so much, so much training, so much continuing education that the decision I had to come, to, I came to a crossroads where I had to either do that and nothing else or do the everything else. And so I opted to do the everything else. Well, within the council, we've got a Medicare insurance specialist who is that way. He does that and nothing else. He's a, he's a broker and he manages and helps his clients to make sure that they've got the best coverage at the best price with the best set of benefits. Oftentimes, another thing that I find is, is particularly prominent in our generation is the set and forget mind, mindset. Oh, I got, I say, uh, do you have Medicare insurance? Well, yeah, I got it uh, eight years ago. Well, have you reviewed it? No, no, I'm with a good company. Well, that's maybe not the right answer. That's maybe not the best thing. The, the insurance industry, the investment industry, the banking industry, the economy, the politics, America is constantly changing, particularly in this financial area. So if you don't have a competent advisor that's helping to keep you up to speed, and reviewing things with you on a, some kind of a regular basis, once a year, uh, once, twice a year, something like that, chances are you're not really getting the best bang for your buck. 
and the insurance industry changes constantly. Obviously, you have to be 65 to be on Medicare, but there's so UGA has 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 just made a big change in the way that they provide uh, for health insurance for the retired folks over 65. And all of a sudden, instead of just you choosing one of two or three UGA plans, UGA says we're going to give you this much money. Go go get some health insurance. Wow, that's a change. That's that's pretty radical. Um, a financial advisor, of course, that's me. So I'm not going to toot my horn too too loudly. However. <laughs> Now, uh, insurance, investments, there's so many new products in the investment world, strategies that weren't even here a couple of years ago, insurance products that weren't here five years ago, products that were here five years ago that really are probably should be replaced. So there's this constant change in the financial services specialist arena that you, you really need a competent uh, advisor who can help you manage all of those assets into a comprehensive, cohesive plan. Another one of the, problem, one of the reasons I became comprehensive was because the, the stockbroker is in competition with the annuity salesman who's in competition with the life insurance agent who's in competition with the bank and the CDs and that leaves the, the client, you the client, kind of in the middle trying to, to struggle. But if you have just one guy that can handle everything or coordinate everything, be a kind of a, a, head, a quarterback, then, then you, you can be in better shape. Relocation and real estate specialists, we kind of have related a little bit to this. Um, a lot of folks are downsizing. That becomes another big issue because now you've got a... Uh, 3,500 square foot house and you're going to downsize to an assisted living room. What do you do with all the rest of the stuff? Where does it all go? Who's going to help you do it if the kids are in Omaha? Or you're going to sell and move to Omaha to be, be with the kids. Somebody's got to help you do all of that. So finding a senior relocation and uh, real estate specialist is uh, another area that we can help connect you with, the moving company. Uh, you might just want to sell your house and move into, oops, assisted living. No. Nope. Well, assisted living is, is also another big issue because uh, how, many different, how many different senior facility, how many different types of facilities are there? Anybody got a guess? Yeah, there's like six. Personal care, independent living, assisted living, memory care, I'm sorry, only five, nursing home. So wh where, where did, where's, where's best for mom? You go back to that mediation services professional and they can help to guide you. Really, can you stay home? Can daughter come and really take care of mom in her home out in Oglethorpe County? Is that really what's best for mom? Is mom moving in with you really what's best for mom? And these are the types of issues, but if selling and moving becomes the issue, then you're talking about, again, a, a, fairly, uh, a fairly hefty cost. Uh, assisted living around town starts at about $2,000 a month for just like a place to live, all the way up to uh, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month. So it can become, it, I mean, sticker shock is, is a big issue, which is, again, why we want you to be aware of all this before you need it, so that you don't kind of have a plan that you're going to move into Arbor Terrace and find out that your $4,000 a month doesn't even get you into the minimum shared, you know, broom closet. So um, hospice care providers. Uh, where is the majority of hospice care provided? That's right. You guys are, you, you beat me to the punch. Uh, however, and how long does hospice care last? It depends. That's right. Um, many, many cases we've had. Mom was given six weeks to live. A year and a half later, mom actually got better. And she was, she's been on hospice. Another case, uh, mom had Alzheimer's. He sold the house. He moved her into an assisted living facility and memory care facility. And doggone it, she got healthier. Because she was eating regular, taking her medication regular, she was socializing, she had all this training, all this care. So hospice care is palliative care 
which where a doctor has said there's a terminal, termination is forthcoming. But doctors don't know either. They're pretty smart, but, and they often sleep in Holiday Inn, but which helps to make them even smarter, you know. Uh, funeral pre-planning, so, okay, we've kind of gone the whole gamut from you've reached retirement, we've taken care of money, we've taken care of uh, care issues, we've taken care of family dynamics, we've taken care of the psychologies, uh, we've found a place for everybody to live out their days. What about pre-planning? This is something that is another burgeoning industry within the, the senior care market because when folks know that this, their time is near, they don't, the, the number one concern is I don't want to be a burden on my family. That's a big concern, of course, for care. I don't want my family to have to be burdened taking care of me. But also, they don't want the kids to have to make all these decisions, again, in the crisis emotional content of mom just died. So pre-planning and pre-need funeral providers, and we've got Lord and Stevens as a member of our council here. They're unable to, to meet with us tonight. But um, this takes such a huge burden off of folks because you arrange the flowers, you arrange the music, you arrange the how, the when. It's not just choosing a casket or choosing an urn if you choose to be cremated. It's, you've got everything done so that when that day arrives, they've got everything all figured out. Um, another interesting point that I learned in talking with them is that the coverage is transferable. So you go to Lord and Stevens and you get your free funeral pre-planning pre, uh, uh, pre done and the pre-need and the arrangements done. And then 10 years from now, sure enough, you do end up deciding to move to San Diego to be next to your daughter. The pre-planning that you did here is transferable to San Diego or wherever you go. I mean, I like San Diego. It's just a nice town. Um, <clears throat> so what we try to do is have professionals to help you with all of these various stages and these various things because I've, I've changed my mantra from long-term care to lifetime care. Same, same initials, but ter what does term mean? It means a beginning and an end. And we don't know where that end is it came, it could, you know, it could be next week, but it could be age 110. People are living, there's more centurions alive today in the United States than there ever has been. And with <clears throat> medicine, with treatments, with better health uh, regimes, I'm a health nut. Well, I'm, yeah, fanatic is what most people would call me. Um, but I feel like this is the only body I got and I'm never going to be able to, my insurance will never replace pay for cloning the rest of my body, there's probably going to be a law against cloning my particular body. They'll be glad when I'm gone. So they, you know, will probably prevent me from doing it. Um, but so lifetime care is really what the mantra of the Elder Care Planning Council of Northeast Georgia is really aimed to help you with. Because once you get your plan and you've, you've educated, you've, chose, you've considered your options, <clears throat> you've figured out a plan, you've implemented it, Guess what happens? Next month, something's going to change. Next year, something else is going to change. Six, 18 months from now, there's going to be a whole lot of things changed. And if you're not in this constant, it's like home maintenance. You paint your house. How long does it last? Oh, 10 years, 15 years? You don't just paint one time and that's it. You don't, you don't have a lifetime care plan one time and then that's it because things, things keep changing. So here are uh, the, um, the logos of several of our members. I'd like to, for the members of the Elder Care Planning Council to please stand up and take a minute to just introduce yourself, tell, tell everybody who you are and what you do so that uh, if, there, if you have any specific questions, we're right on time at 45 minutes. If you've got general questions, we will entertain that. If you've got specific questions for any of these folks, uh, here they are. So thanks very much for coming. It's just a, a great pleasure to speak with you. And I hope that I've been able to provide or we have been able to provide uh, some eye opening for you, some some knowledge and giving you some some opportunities to uh, to grow and learn more about how to age with dignity. Thank you very much.